The last uh, topic in our extremely quick tour of calculus here is that of uh, antiderivatives and integrals. So the function f of x, capital F, is an antiderivative of some other function, little f of x, if the derivative of capital F is little f. You might also see the notation of the integral sign, but it's important to note that this is called an indefinite integral. The indefinite integral by itself doesn't have a lot of meaning for us, but there's a special case of evaluating the indefinite integral uh, at particular locations, and in which case it becomes a definite integral. And we use this notation. Uh, a definite integral is, is no longer a function. See, this thing called the indefinite integral is a function. It's a function of x. But when we evaluate um, this indefinite interval at a pair of locations, xa and xb, and take the difference, which is sometimes called or written as evaluating at two locations like so, this is called the definite interval. It has an interesting interpretation if we were to draw a graph of f of x, the little f that is, versus x. And this might be xa, and this might be xb, this thing called the definite interval. If we imagine lots of little rectangles touching the function here, this thing called the definite interval is essentially the area under this curve of all those little rectangles. But taken with each of these things having a little width delta x to them. It's the limit as x goes to 0 of a very large sum of these little, the areas of each of these little rectangles. So each little rectangle has an area of delta x times the, func the value of the function at that point. And if we sum up the values of the function at each of these little x sub i's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, on up to a very big number, n, capital N, then we've calculated the area of each of these little rectangles, which approximates the area under this curve as this width of these little rectangles goes to zero. In other words, we make more and more little rectangles because we have to make each one a little, a little bit narrow. So sometimes it's useful for us to calculate the area under a curve like this. Now these are just nev numbers, these definite integrals, and they can be either positive or negative. So let me just point out 
um, that, why it can be positive or negative. Let's take an, a simple example again. Let's take the sine function. Well, the sine looks something like that. And if we start drawing these little rectangles, all these little rectangles have an area to them, and each one has an area f of xi times delta x, but each of these values of the function f of xi are positive numbers when the value of the sine is when the sine is evaluated anywhere between zero and 180 degrees. So for example, from zero to 180 degrees, or that's otherwise known as pi. That integral will be greater than zero. But if you were to evaluate the integral from pi to 2 pi of sine of x dx, that number would be less than zero because each of these little rectangles here now below the, or the x-axis, and so each of these little areas of each rectangle is less than zero. On the other hand, notice that the integral from 2 pi of sine of x dx would actually equal zero, because this area would exactly equal that area. The sine function is more or less symmetric. And this can be true for many different kinds of functions that we're going to be looking at in the future, the function um, can have a definite interval that's either positive or negative depending over which range that we're taking the, you know, the definite interval. So we just have to be careful what we, what we mean by positive and negative.